How Former NBA Star, Eddie Curry, Became Homeless It might seem hard to believe right now but Eddie Curry was one of those players people would say had a bright future ahead of him. He might not have been the best defender the NBA had ever seen but he was huge and solid and could score as well as take up space in the paint. And that was all he needed to be, at least, a fairly valuable player in the league. But right now, all that potential is hardly recognizable under all the mysterious cataclysm his life has become. So, what happened? Hey there and welcome to the channel. Today, we are going to be rehashing a particularly painful and disappointing story of one NBA player that so many had high hopes for, Eddie Curry. The story of how he went from promising to hopeless is a really intriguing story no one likes to tell, but we will try to tell it as best as we can in this video. Interestingly Curry didn't always want to be a basketball player. He actually grew up with the dream of becoming a gymnast. However, with time, he realized that his sheer size and skill could combine to make him a dominant basketball player and so he changed focus and devoted his time and attention to basketball. And that's when he began to experience success. In 2001 as a senior, he led his high school to clinch second place at the statewide championship in his hometown of Illinois and also selected as the state's Mr. Basketball. In that same year, he also got into McDonald's All-American team and even played well enough to be named MVP of the game. With this slew of successes in his wake, therefore, Curry decided to forego college and enter the NBA draft where got picked by the Chicago Bulls as the fourth overall pick. This was also in 2001 right after he finished high school. Right from the beginning of his professional career at the NBA, Curry made it clear that he was good at what he did. Even as he adjusted to the style and level of play expected at the NBA, Curry also continued to work on and improve his own game so that by his third season at Chicago Bulls, Curry became the team's starting center. With increasing playtime and the experience that came from playing a few seasons with the NBA, Curry soon became one of the best players of his team and even managed to become the leading scorer in 2004-2005 NBA season. However, right around here is where the good part of the story ends for Eddie Curry. Everything takes a sad and, sometimes, even bizarre turn for the worse from here. During a game with the Memphis Grizzlies on the 30th of March, 2005, Curry started to complain of chest pains and lightheadedness which are two symptoms of heart arrhythmia. Now, though Curry's symptoms seemed out of the blue, the management at Chicago Bulls revealed that they'd heard Curry complain of the symptoms before. But that when Curry was taken to the hospital, the doctors couldn't find what was responsible for these symptoms. Whatever the case, though, it was clear that something was wrong with Curry. And so, the team decided to bench Curry for the rest of the season to prevent another episode. The team also wanted Curry to take a DNA test to see if he was predisposed to hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is a serious condition that could lead to sudden death. It was this same condition that caused the death of former basketball players like Reggie Lewis and Hank Gathers who both collapsed and died on the court during a game. But Curry refused to take the test, claiming that he felt healthy and citing medical as well as ethical reasons to back up his decision. There was a lot of back and forth because neither party would back down and then the Chicago Bulls traded him off to the New York Knicks. This was a fresh start for Curry and things looked promising once again as Curry would have his best professional season in 2006-2007, his health issues and attending controversies now behind him. However, this success would not last long, and soon, Curry started to regress. In fact, for the next two seasons, Curry began to put on serious weight, and then added to the fact that he was managing a few injuries as well, he began to appear in fewer games. In fact, he only appeared in a total of 10 games in his last two seasons. But if you think his career looked bleak, his personal life was a much hotter mess. In 2009, Dave Kaczynski who had been Curry's personal driver since 2005 filed a lawsuit against Curry accusing him of unpaid wages to the tune of $98,000 as well as sexual harassment. He demanded $5 million in damages. But Curry vehemently denied the allegations, with his legal team pointing out that Kaczynski couldn't be trusted as that he was a convicted felon. In the end, the court ruled in Kaczynski's favor and Curry had to pay damages. Curry has, however, revealed that he had a discussion with Kaczynski after the court's ruling where Kaczynski admitted that he set Curry up because he was in a tight spot and needed the money. Curry has also admitted that another reason life turned around so dramatically for him was that he didn't know how to say no. According to him, if someone had a sad story for him, he just couldn't say no. So, he was paying off people's mother's mortgages, covering cell phone bills, and even making car payments. But Curry's large heart wasn't the sole reason the player went from hero to zero. Curry did make a lot of poor choices as reports would eventually show. 
As of 2010, Curry was $2 million in debt despite making more than $57 million in his nine-year NBA career. He also defaulted on a $585,000 loan he took in 2008, actually going on to claim that he shouldn't be required to pay back the money since he had other expenses. Still, Curry managed to spend about $30,000 on monthly household expenses, $17,000 on relatives, $6,000 on a personal chef, and an unbelievable over $1,000 on monthly satellite and cable bills. Some say this is probably the most expensive cable bill the world has ever seen. He also paid $350,000 to Jawan Howard, another NBA player for reasons unknown. But perhaps the worst thing to happen to Eddie Curry was the death of his ex-girlfriend and their nine-month-old daughter, Ava. Curry's story is a tragic one and even though you could say he had it coming with his poor choices and the people around him taking advantage of him, it's still difficult not to feel some pity for him. But as for Curry who is 37 years old now and currently worth only about $3 million, after a lifetime of making poor judgments, he can say that things have really changed. And even though people still troll him on social media for his past, Curry says he has learned to focus on what matters to him, and that is his family. We sincerely hope things get better for him. This brings us to the end of today's video. Please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell so you know whenever we drop new content. Till we come your way next time with more interesting videos, it's goodbye from us. Even though he's had a very challenging road, Eddie Curry's love for basketball has never stopped. After being released by the Dallas Mavericks in 2012, he signed with the Judge Yong Golden Bulls of the Chinese Basketball Association. He played in 29 games with the averages of 23 points, 10 rebounds, and 1 assist per game. He would miss his last games with the Golden Bulls due to gastroenteritis, an inflammation of the stomach and intestine. In 2018, Curry signed with the Zhuhai Wolf Warriors of the ASEAN Basketball League, the ABL, located in Southeast Asia. After being released on January 20, 2019, Curry would be seen next in the Big Three, Season 3 playing for the Killer Threes coached by former New York Knicks great Charles Oakley. Even though Curry has dealt with personal tragedy, the foreclosure of his Chicago home, alleged sexual harassment by his former chauffeur, and serious heart problems, he has learned to cope. He has controlled his health in the last couple of years and looks like he's getting his affairs in order. From being a USA Today All-American and Illinois Mr. Basketball honors to be a very solid NBA big man, Curry has had his ups and downs in between. For most, he was a major bust. His lack of discipline and showing up overweight contributed to his shortening career. Although to some he didn't live up to certain expectations, he was not as bad as most want to make him out to be. For instance, when he played in New York for coach Mike D'Antoni who specialized in a run-and-gun type of offense with very little defense being played. This system did not play well to Curry's strengths and limited his impact on the court. This was followed by a series of injuries and additional other setbacks. The game changed on him quickly. He still played 11 seasons and did what him wanted to do. You can't be a bust when you achieve some of your life goals early. In a very recent interview, Curry mentioned that he has come to realize that basketball isn't the most important thing in his life. Having good health and making sure his family is doing great is the most important thing. We all wish Eddie Curry all of the success. Once again until next time, it's goodbye for now.